powerful, powerful testimony right there. Next up, we have uh, Farah Prudence. Uh, she is a human rights activist, writer, and expert on Middle Eastern culture and Islam. Farah lived in the Middle East for over 10 years and also worked with the U.S. military for more than one year in Iraq. Farah was a victim of domestic abuse, rape, sexual assault, and still lives under the threat of honor killing due to the fatwa on her life. She aims to rescue victims and save the USA from becoming a Sharia-compliant country. Let's hear it for Farah! لنمجد ونشكر الرب على نعمة يسوع الحبيب موته على الصليب ورجوعه من الموت لغفران خطايانا سلام الرب يسوع معكم المسيح معكم يا جماعة Hi everyone Did you get that? Good afternoon My name is Farah Prudence I am a wife a mother an American an ex-Muslim and the daughter of the Almighty Amen. I want to thank you all for being here, but most of all, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as well as my husband, for allowing me to be here today. Yeah. Many thanks to Mr. Will Johnson and his team. Thanks to the Dearborn Police, our men and women in blue. Yeah. And a very special thanks to all of the security teams that came out here today. Y'all don't know they're not getting paid. They're, they're putting in their time and their effort. Thank you. And they're putting in their skills for this. They're putting their lives on the line. Because I cannot speak freely in America without any threats. I come to you today in an effort to save the daughters of this nation, as well as our nation as a whole. America, ladies and gentlemen, has a heart problem. The symptoms and consequences are too many to count. America has taken tolerance and acceptance to be a high virtue. Under the guise of tolerance and acceptance, the once righteous light and salt of the world, our America, has become tainted with the blood of her own children. The loss of liberty and freedom by her women and the enslavement of her men to a hateful, violent, and dangerous ideology. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow citizens, Sharia is being practiced in the United States of America. When our communities are under attack, we do? John Quincy Adams said, In the 7th century of the Christian era, a wandering Arab of the lineage of Haja, the Egyptian, combining the powers of transcendent genius with the pre- uh, preternatural energy of fanatic and the fraudulent spirit of an imposter proclaimed himself as a messenger from heaven and spread desolation and delusion over an extensive portion of the earth. Adopting from the sublime conception of the Mosaic Law the doctrine of one omnipotent God, he connected indissolubly with it the audacious falsehood that he was himself his prophet and apostle. Adopting from the new revelation of Jesus the faith and hope of the immoral life, immortal life, and of future retribution, he humbled it to the dust by adapting all the rewards and sanctions of his religion to the gratification of the sexual passion. He poisoned the source of human felicity at the fountain by degrading and conditioning of the female sex and the allowance of polygamy, and he declared undistinguishing and um, exterminating war as a part of his religion against all the rest of mankind. The essence of his doctrine was violence and lust to exalt the brutal over the spiritual part of the human nature. The writings go on and on. John Quincy Adams was no racist and he was no sexist. He was one of our founding fathers and so was his father, John Adams. He's my favorite president. No wives there. Abolitionists wanted for women to have their rights. So when you read those texts, and also you can read the set texts of St. Thomas Aquinas, he, he spoke and wrote beautifully describing Islam. I was born to a Christian Orthodox mother and a Muslim father in Ohio. You could say that I am the daughter of Isaac and Ishmael combined. At the age of six, my father moved us to the Middle East where my mother, four siblings, and I endured a constant chain of physical, mental, verbal, and sexual abuse. 
at the age of 10 in an effort to gain the love and approval of my non-practicing Muslim father, I dedicated myself to the studying and practicing of Islam. I soon discovered that all the abuse I was going through was not only sanctioned by Sharia, the laws of Islam, but practiced by the perfect man, Muhammad. I decided that the God of Islam was not one that I was willing to serve and follow, and I clung to the hope that one day I would go back home to America where I could be free again. I was 15 years old when I made it back to the West with my family. By then, I already had a suicide attempt under my belt and a very personal visit from the one I bow down before today, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. And my experience... I am not alone in. This is what nobody wants to tell you. But there is a huge revival happening in the Middle East and in Iran. And the Lord is working overtime. Y'all better catch up. My story is long, but in short, by the grace of God, my mother and my siblings and I escaped from my father and the Muslim community in Canada. My father then proceeded to request that his local mosque issue a fatwa, a death sentence on us, for becoming murtaddin, apostates, for leaving Islam, and the, ma and the mosque gladly obliged. I am astounded to be standing here today before you, free from sharia and free in Christ. However, I am the exception, not the rule. Every year in America, there are at least 27 honor killings. There are thousands of honor violence cases and dozens of girls undergoing FGM, female genital mutilation. I wish I could show you the faces, but here are some names that I want you to think of the next time someone says we should accept and respect all cultures and religions. Tahani Mansour. Tahani was in her 20s. She was a pharmacist in Ohio, a beautiful young lady who committed the great crime of having a messy room and dating a non-Muslim. Her father went up to her when she was sleeping in her bed and shot her in the head twice. His family, meaning his wife and her siblings, stood by him the whole time and said it was because, wait, he has diabetes. True story, y'all, this is the news. I'm not making this up, I swear. Nur al-Maliki, 20 years old. She was ran over and killed by her Iraqi Muslim father for being too westernized. So was actually her boyfriend's mom. She was ran over as well. When Nur al-Maliki could find the 911 call online, just putting Nur al-Maliki 911 call, her mother called in to find out where she was at. And she told the 911 responder, Tell her thank you for doing this to our family. She deserves this. Aya Tamimi, 19 years old. Her father and mother beat, restrained, and burned her for reportedly declining an arranged marriage to an older man and talking to a boy. Asiya Hassan was beheaded by her husband for requesting a divorce. Her husband worked at a Muslim TV station that promoted a peaceful and moderate Islam. Can you define irony? Sandila Kinwa was strangled by her father for failing to be true to her religion. Amina and Sara Sayyid, 17 and 18 years old, were shot by their father, who was an Egyptian immigrant, for dating non-Muslim boys and for being too westernized. 16-year-old Palestina Isa was murdered by her mother and her father for getting a job and dating an American boy who just happened to be black. Ma'arib al-Hishmawi, 16 years old, refused an arranged marriage, so her father and mother beat her and poured hot cooking oil on her. The list goes on and on. No, I am the exception. I want you to take a moment and imagine the sheer terror that these girls and women felt. They are trapped in their homes. They're trapped in their communities that we, we have allowed to practice Sharia here in the United States. And customs from a culture of death, apartheid and abuse. And they are not in Jordan, they are not in Iraq, they're not in Iran or Afghanistan. They're right here. They're American girls, they're American women that we as a nation have decided to offer up as a sacrifice on the altar of acceptance and tolerance. Come on. And of course, respect for other cultures and religions. Well, 
I'm here to say no more. Yeah. Amen. No more shall I stay silent. No more shall I turn a blind eye or say it's none of my business. No more will I sit on the sidelines while America takes a turn from being a refuge for the oppressed to a land of oppression. Join me and the other great voices here today and say that Sharia is not welcome here. Yeah. And I do not accept it for me. I do not accept it for my daughter. I do not accept it for your daughters. I do not accept it for little Muslim girls. I do not accept it for Muslim women. I will not accept it for my neighbors. Sharia is incompatible with the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights, and humanity right. in general. Now, Michigan. I'm going to single you out. Okay. Michigan is at a great risk of undergoing an elected takeover of Sharia. Linda Sarsour, who is outraged that Sharia is illegal in 22 states, has endorsed Abdul and Sayyid for governor. This man and his wife are not only Sharia compliant, they have strong and public ties to care, Hamas, and the Muslim Brotherhood. And there is no room in America for anyone who wants to live under Sharia. A person cannot be a slave to Sharia and a free citizen pledging their allegiance to America. It's not set by me, it's set by the Quran. Let's stand courageous unafraid of being called names like liars and bigots and sexists and racists. Let's stand in the face of oppression and evil. Talk about it, learn about it, contact us. All of us are willing to go wherever you provide us a venue. Education is key. This is what we need to do. Join the Republican Party! <laughs> I'm a libertarian, actually. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Republicans aren't bad. So, <laughs> let's Let's stand together and let's get the word out there because otherwise we just sound like that. That's we have right. no idea what we're talking about. But just as a side question, I'd really like to know what that sign says because those are Arabic letters, but it doesn't say anything in Arabic. <laughs> Can you spell Demi? How do you spell Demi these days? here for Farah. And, and importantly, give yourself a good round of applause, you guys. It's so important to show up to these things. It's all about, actually, come on, give yourself a round of applause. You guys came out and you, you showed up, and that's what it's going to take to uh, fight for our interests. So, YouTube really appreciate brother. that, you guys. Next is uh, a Marine Corps veteran, uh, yeah. Afghanistan vet, Rick Wright from Red Elephants. He's going to share his experiences he's had. So first, I want to see if we can get a little bit of agreement over there. Hey guys, you guys against a lot of the violence in the Middle East? You hear me now? Oh, they don't want to answer. Well, let's say a lot of troops that go over there agree that a lot of stuff we're doing isn't necessarily the best. So I want to uh, share with you some of my experiences in the Marine Corps. Now I was in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring, Enduring Freedom. Now I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I had a glorified firefight or anything like that. I was standing a lot of posts. That's about all I did. But over there, there were some bad experiences with the culture, the Islamic culture that commonly throws gays off of buildings. Right. While standing post in these countries in the Middle East, it's common for our unit to be stuck on post two to three hours later after our scheduled time to get off. Why? Because the morals and ethics over there, the work ethics, are not the same. They didn't have to show up on time. The concept of time is not similar over there. How does that go for them coming into this country? 
can they work a, an effective job? Now, when they got finally got there, it's very clear that we were upset. So what they do is they try to compensate us. How? By offering anal sex. <laughs> they would make this hand gesture where they'd go, friend, 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 friend. Uh -oh. This is them offering anal sex in compensation for us being upset that they didn't come to post on time. Oh my to them, sex is fine. You can have gay sex, but if you loved a man, that meant you have to die. I question how we sit there and we deal with these, these cultures that are so corrupt that they have this act that they say they're against, but yet they've acted out. And it's clear that it's as corrupt as the Clinton administration, where it really just depends on whether they like you or not. None of these is as terrible as what they do to children, though. You know, they, there's been a lot of speakers already talking about what they've done to the girls. But I'll tell you what, I had to sit through an entire class before I went into country about how we were not allowed to interrupt an older male raping a six-year-old boy, let alone a six-year-old girl. And it's not just at nine. They tell them that they, if they rape them under the age of nine, it might be bad, but all they have to do is take care of them. They are then their property. How is this a culture that can assimilate into America? How many of them do assimilate? I don't know. There might be some, but does that mean they're throwing away their faith? These are some questions we need to ask and get answered before we bring in millions. We do have examples that we could look at, though. A canary in the coal mine, if we want to say so. If you look at UK, it's a perfect example of what we can expect if we keep bringing in this culture in large numbers without allowing them to properly assimilate and naturalize. Since its growth last year, London's mayor, Sadiq Khan, said terrorism is just part and parcel of living in a big city. Well, that isn't the case in cities that are based only in Western culture. Do we want to accept that? Do you want to accept no. the culture of terrorism, no. genital mutilation, no. child molestation? No. No. Just recently, London has been titled the world capital in acid attacks. Congratulations for improving the city so much, Mayor Khan. Come on. Now let's focus on America again. The Ayatollah of Iran, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, but just for spelling K-H-O-M-E-I-N-I, -I, stated a man can marry a girl younger than nine years of age. Even if the girl is still a baby being breastfed, a man, however, is prohibited from having intercourse with a girl younger than nine. Other sexual acts, however, such as foreplay, rubbing, kissing, and sodomy is perfectly allowed. Is that the culture we want to invite no, into no, America? No. I want to know if our politicians who support this massive influx of unvetted, un integrated invaders condone the child rapists and molesters that they force upon our cities? Do they have sympathy for the victims that they just fed to the predators they released into the habitat our ancestors built for us? Yeah. This Western culture based on freedom? Well, that's a question, even if they answered, we wouldn't be able to believe them since the odds of a politician matching their words with their actions is nearly zero. That's right. So what do we do about these problems? How do we address this cultural invasion that seeks to destroy our way of life? I have the beginning of the answer, although not a full one. The simple start to it is we fight. We fight back with every legal means we have, and because some of the corruption is spread rampantly, we fight back with every illegal means that they have shown they won't enforce. Why? Because without an equal enforcement of a law, what is it other than a tool to politically beat or to beat your political opponents with. Come on, that's right. That was the grossly simplified version. I don't know if everybody's going to like my next suggestion, and it's not for everyone. But I refer to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 through 19. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lonely than to divide the spoil with the proud. I think as a movement we have neglected to admit when we have been losing and even beaten. We seem to never review some of our biggest losses, so much so that we sometimes forget that this immigration in issue is only a symptom of a bigger societal cancer. 
welfare, food stamps abuse, and social security have almost exclusively been a tool of the left to have middle class fund the campaigns of the Democrats through leveraging the souls of our unborn children for the unfunded liabilities that they buy votes for these tyrannical tax slave trading politicians. They have set up a system that could fund hundreds of millions of dollars into political activism for whoever is willing to take it. The left is successfully funding their activism for years with social programs. And many of these left-leaning strongholds, you can receive over $50,000 a year in benefits for simply not having a decent job and not working. And by the way, you don't really pay much taxes on those because you're, behind, you're below the poverty line. Instead of taking and using these weapons, the communist left has designed and use it against them, we continually fund it by working hard and paying large amounts in taxes. We have literally funded our enemies into buying themselves votes. I suggest that we start teams that fund their political activism with these social programs. Let's make it a weapon that no politician wants around anymore. That is the only way we will get these things repealed. As when every politician is being sick of being harassed at the places they go, the restaurants and the companies that support them. The society has shown that the tactics the left use is successful. When you outcry, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And so although it's not for everyone and we still need people to work hard, I think that we should use political activism like this. But shouldn't we bring ourselves to their, should we really bring ourselves to their level? Level? I'm sorry my friends, but holding yourself to a higher moral standard than your enemy is not a luxury you get at war. And yes, as Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey pointed out, we are in the second American Civil War. We can only hope that this day is a cultural one and doesn't spread to the violence that the first one did. I suggest that when we use these political funds to organize, we do make sure that the politicians, the companies, and everyone that gets politically active, that they know what the effects are. It cannot be a one-sided battle anymore. I'm not saying that I have the right answers, but I do know we are losing our freedoms and way of life, all while being forced to fund our enemies' political activism. We should at least even the playing field. Thomas Jefferson said, The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It's its natural manure. I have hope that we can avoid this type of violence by using the, left whip, the left's weapons against them and regain our freedom back. The communist left has already openly declared war against constitutional and freedom-loving Americans. Let's make sure that the politicians know if they collapse the society that our forefathers and ancestors fought to give us, their blood will be spilled the same as ours. It's not a threat of violence from us, it is a threat of violence from the violent people they bring in, the destruction, the collapse of society that they are inviting. That is what we have to let them know. God bless America. Thanks, Rick, for your service. Appreciate you risking it for uh, America. Um, next up, we have Maurice Delk and uh, Sandra Solomon. And after that, we're going to do a Pledge of Allegiance. You guys, uh, it's awesome to be out here with you guys. I'm, I'm, I appreciate you guys coming out here and supporting and taking the time, you know, out of your lives to come out here. I know a lot of people were reluctant to come out here because of the stigma revolving around, you know, Dearborn, Michigan. But I can tell you, like, I literally, I didn't see anybody in, in um, Burkas when I came here in Dearborn. I haven't. Just to note, you know, note that. But next up, we have uh, Maurice Delk. Mo is an activist from Wisconsin, but he was born and raised in Chicago. Mo has been a Democrat his whole life until he left the Democratic plantation two years ago. His passion is to reach out to the inner cities. He believes now is the time to bring our message raw and uncut, but to also remind everybody we are on one nation under God. Amen. Right, amen. Welcome, Maurice. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. One nation under God. All my patriots with the flags in there, not even with the flag. Let's make some noise in this place. Let's make some crazy noise up in here. You know, these people over there, 
they can talk to the hand. Dear liberals, y'all can talk to the hand. You can show me your middle fingers, but you can talk to the hand. In my terminated voice, talk to the hand. I'm going to tell you about these white liberals. I'm going to tell you this. I'm, I'm going to get this on my chest. Because the white liberals, they like to pretend that they love something and they don't. Right. You know, the white liberals, I'm going to tell you, they really don't like black people. But they pretend like they do. The white liberals, they <laughs> always pretend gay, gay. like they're for people's rights. I'm going to tell you this. Gay, gay. If the white liberals know how that their Muslims is against uh, abortion, I don't think they really know, y'all. I don't think they really know. White liberals love to pretend. But I'm going to leave that alone, y'all. But I'm going to talk about the, we, we, the, we the American people. I ain't come to talk about that. But I just want to give y'all a shout out, you white liberals. You can, you can give me the finger. You can give me the finger, but you will not show up in Chicago or Detroit. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think, keep beating them drums, okay? Okay, but I'm about protecting American values, y'all. We are protecting American values. It's time to look at us as Americans, not colored people or white people. That's what it's about, you dig? You know, anti-American people. See, they look at us as sellouts, right? Really, they're the sellouts. Anti-American people are the sellouts. Pro-black people are the sellouts because they don't know the real value of being an American. See, we know the values of being American because we are the American people. It's, Amen, I'm, Come right. on, I don't want to say too much, y'all. Okay, it's it's okay, okay if I say it. Come on. You're okay, Come on. say it. But American people are the people. I ain't never been into Africa. I ain't never been. I ain't trying to go back to Africa. I, I don't want to do all the like Kuta Kente. I'm just saying. I ain't never been to Africa. I don't want to be. I, I want to be in America. You know what I'm saying? Because I guarantee you that if we go down to Africa, if we go down to Africa, they're going to look at us like Americans. You know what I'm saying? Look at me. I'm a light-skinned and black dude right here. I'm a high yellow negro. They, they, they don't look at me as being an African. So why we got to call ourselves, oh, we, why we got to be so pro-black? You know what I'm saying? Why not can we be pro-American? You know what I'm saying? We are the American people. You know what I'm saying? Look at us. We got the flags over here. We got American flag. I don't see African flags flashed over here. I don't see other. Look, we are American. You know what I'm saying? We, we mutts. I'm going to say it like this. We mutts. We, 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 we're different cultures. That, that's so unique about America. Because we are the American people. These people, they're not the American I don't know what people. They are. They're not the American people. They're not the American people. Why is it they got Russian flags? They, they, look, I promise you, on that thing I love, they will not go in Chicago in the hood and go ahead and show they show who they are. I promise you they'll get robbed. I promise you they would. They would get robbed if they go down there. Then you know they what call saying? the police. Yeah, they call the police. Like people like ourselves, the real people, we get respected. You dig? But I'm going to tell you this. Here. We fighting for our freedom. We fight for your freedom. You know what I'm saying? While they are fighting to enslave us, they are fighting to chain us. You know? They want to keep us chained on a democratic plantation. And that's what they are. Look at them. They are doing all that chanting. Look at them. They're nothing but a cult. That's all they is. But you know what? We are nothing but the American people, one nation under God. See, we don't hate Muslims. We don't hate gays. Do, do anybody else hate gays? No. no. Can I ask y'all something? Who hate gays? Let me know. Anybody who hate gays? Right. You hate gays, but do you love the people? The people. Who are the people? See, we're not white supremacists. We're not homophobics over here. They Don't get it twisted. Don't get us twisted. We know who we are. But they fighting to chain us. They fighting to censor us. They want to bully us at the silence, but they can't. Because you know what? We are for free speech. They are not for free speech. Right. They want to keep tape around our mouths. You know? Look at them. Hey, dear Antifa's over there. How much your souls is paying y'all? Dude, how much your souls is paying you? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got some attention. You happy? You happy, dude? You, you know, you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. You want the attention. But anyway, look at everybody. You sweaty. You go. You are racist, dude. But we are Americans. We are Americans. 
You guys are anti-Americans, and we are not anti-Americans. Right. Let's keep on being Americans. Let's keep on being Americans. I hear this. I, I heard a bit of grapevine that if we come to Dearborn, Michigan, that they're going to beat our tail. They're going to beat us down. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. But guess what? That was fake news. That was fake news. That was fake news. Dude, meet me in Chicago. Meet me somewhere. Meet me in Chicago. But anyway, hey. But everybody, you know what? It's about protecting American values, protecting American people, because we are the American people. We're trying to stop all this spirit of perversion. Look, we're trying to stop all the spirit of division. We don't care if you gay. We got some gay Trump supporters. We got some gay patriots over here. We don't hate gays. Can I ask y'all one more time? Do you hate gays? No! You heard this. I'm going to ask y'all one more time. Do y'all hate gays? No! Is any white supremacist over here? No! If it is, speak now forever. Hold your peace. <laughs> white power. Look, I said it, but, <laughs> but look, listen, listen to everybody. We are some real people. I've never seen so much real people into our... What the hell? You got to lose. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. See y'all. Yeah. Give it up for Maurice. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, we have uh, Sandra Solomon, a truly concerned human rights advocate and proud citizen of a great nation of Canada. Sandra was born in Palestine. Oh, Israel. Let's hear it for Sandra. Woo! Are we all on fire today? Yeah! Patriots! First of all, I want to say thank you, William. Thank you, Will. God bless you. God bless United States of America! God bless Donald Trump! God bless the police! We give them blood, God bless and every patriot who came here today. Salute to everyone, thank you to 3% as well, respect. Okay, to start it off well, my name is Sandra Solomon. Unfortunately, I'm Palestinian, but that's fine. I was born in Ramallah, but I was raised uh, most of my life in Saudi Arabia since I was nine years old. Who have been in Saudi Arabia before? Who visited Saudi Arabia? Who've been there? How do you like it? Diversity? Did you see diversity? Did you see women in shorts? Did you see women in bikinis? Did you see bright parade there? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, because the men, they have to put the, just the... Yeah, the white one with no underwear, by the way. <laughs> That's where I got sexually harassed in Mecca, for you to know. I was raised in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, it's 100% Islamic Sharia law. When I say Islamic Sharia law, that means... All the source of all the legal system, it's been taken from the Quran and the Hadith, the life of Muhammad, what he said and what he did. The oath that we have to give in school every day, Islam is our religion, Quran is our constitution, Muhammad is our prophet, Jihad is our way, and dying for Allah is our ultimate dream. This is what I grew up with. Between 10 and 11, after Friday prayer, which is Juma prayer in Arabic, there is something called execution square, where even kids, they can witness either beheading or flog, cutting off the hands, stone, name it. I witnessed the beheading myself when I was a child. As I grew up in 100% Islamic Sharia Allah constitution, by sense of like high, high school age, I start to think, I start to refuse, I start to rebel because they force me to wear the hijab, the burqa, the niqab, 
head to toe cover. It's not a choice, it's a must. And I start to question why I have to cover myself. Why as a woman, I cannot question Islam. I start to have lots of problems with my teachers, with the girls in school, with my family, the fact that I refuse to wear the hijab, the fact I start to criticize Islam, to criticize Sharia Allah, and they start to call me, you are a blasphemer. I'm a proud blasphemer. I start, I start to analyze Quran as we read it, because most of Muslims, they read the Quran, they memorize Quran, but they don't understand it. The fact that every Muslim on the face of the planet, they believe that the Quran is their one and only constitution. They call the Quran is the constitutional, constitutional book. So therefore, when I did assignment to prove to the teachers that whoever wrote the Quran is a psycho. And whoever will follow this book, He's gonna end up turn a psycho too. And I excuse him why I don't wanna be a psycho. Thank you. I'm normal. Yay! Therefore, the fact that the doctors, that the teaching that they force us into to hate, to become a jihadist, to become a terrorist, as a Palestinian, we have to hate the Jews. We have to kill every Jew, regardless of existing of Israel or not has nothing to do. We must wipe off Israel one day as a Palestinian to clarify the Aqsa Mosque from the filthy Jews. And with them, the Christians. We've been taught that the Bible is corrupted, the Christians are filthy, they are kafir. Anyone who do not believe in Islam consider or labeled kafir, means infidel. Anyone who does not want to submit to Sharia Allah because they believe this is the final word supposedly from God and he knows better and guess what I know better than him and I will never bow to Satan that they worship. I came here before you I drove today from Canada we're not in any better situation than the US. You're lucky to have Donald Trump. No matter what, no matter what the propaganda, no matter what people say, trust me, we are thirsty to another Canadian Trump. We're dying for Canadian Trump. We have a jihadi, Justin Trudeau, jihadi Trudeau, Khomeini, supporting the terrorists, opening the door for ISIS. Will Trump do that? He gave ten and a half million dollars to a convicted terrorist, leaving the veterans left alone in the cold. This is kind of prime minister we have. I want to take a moment to plead to President Donald Trump to take a serious action toward the policy of Justin Trudeau, the international policy. And I'm here to warn every true patriot, every a true loving for this nation, United States of America, I'm warning you that Canada, Canada, it's become an international threat. The fact that he opened the door to a terrorist, which is the true Muslim. If you want to know the true face of Islam, look what ISIS is doing. Hamas, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, name it. Name it. I was raised under 100% Sharia Allah. It's not just I read the Quran or I study it, I lived it. I know exactly how it feels, especially for women. Especially for women to be quelled. They're trying to quell us now in Canada, a Muslim, and be a Krakalit bringing motion M103, Islamophobia motion. Quell anyone, dare to criticize Islam, dare to criticize Muhammad, dare to criticize Sharia. Why? Because this book, it doesn't teach them democracy, civilization. A civilized people, they talk to each other. They don't quell each other. I'm going to read to you the proof. It's just one, one sentence. It say it all. From the chapter of Muhammad, the, the Muslim constitution. Okay? Chapter 47, verse 34, 35, it says, So do not be a weak and do not call for peace. 
Do not call for peace when you have the upper hand. Read the Quran for yourself to understand the root of the problem. It's not the people. Many Muslims are brainwashed with this, the teaching of this book since they are babies. Anyone, any Muslim start to use their brain and start to realize and understand that there's a better way. I don't have to kill no Jew, no Christian, nobody yeah. for the sake of going in, in seven, for 72 version, what I'm gonna do with them? <laughs> Especially, <laughs> like they have, this is a cult. Islam, it's not a religion, stop calling it religion because it's a totalitarian ideology masked with religion. They play the game of a victim card. It's expired. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll have no mercy. Guess what? Because we have to be the voice of the voiceless. If I make it, there's a thousands of Muslim women and even men. They are getting persecuted because under Sharia Allah, whoever leave Islam consider apostate should be killed. Muhammad said. Man whoever changes his religion, kill him. If I was in Middle East right now, I escaped Sharia Allah miraculously with my child. I came to Canada with no money, no language, only baby with me, three years old. From the street, I start from the scratch. All what I was looking for, it's my freedom. That's it. This is my warning to every American woman. If you support Sharia Allah, that means you support FGM. That means you support child marriage. That means you support forcing of the hijab. That means you support a man to have up to four wives and endless number of six slaves. Is that what you want, American women? Feminists? Where's the true feminist? Is that what democracy and civilization? The Western civilization was founded on Judeo-Christian value. That's right. That's the way it is. Either you like it or not, and it will remain. And we will stand because we're civilized. Islam will take you to the seventh century to live in a barbaric, savage way. We don't want that. We already pass. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers give their life to, for you to live free. That's right. We salute everyone who gave their life. We salute Donald Trump, the president that's the one and only. And I bleed to him today. Canada, he needs to take a serious action toward jihadi Justin. Open door policy. Lots of things I'm doing now and lots of things I'm gonna be doing. But one question for the, the true enemy of USA there, where is US flag? Where is your flag? Show me your flag. Show me where is your you where is your flag? That's right, you're They don't these are the true fascists. These are the true fascists. How can I be a Nazi and I visit Israel and I always stand for Israel and I'm Israel Chai? I'm Israel Chai. You hear it well? I'm Israel Chai. I stand for Israel. We stand for the truth. Because one and only the truth will set you free, will set Canada free, US free, the West free, everyone. Even them. We don't hate nobody. I don't hate Muslims. My family is still Muslim. I pray for them. But we have to keep on educating people because these people is uneducated. They are deceived. In Islam, you must lie until you get what you want using taqiyya. The final thing I want to say to you, if you want to, if you fed up with terrorism, if you fed up with jihad, if you, how many a terror attacks took, took terror attacks, it takes place here in USA. How many? A lot. I lost the count. I really, I lost the count. How many terror attacks should take place until people get it? Islam will always and always design for one purpose, to conquer. Their final goal, to build a worldwide Islamic caliphate. And the Muslim Brotherhood are playing the game very well. And many people deceived by it.
The final thing, just to update you my latest activity, it's gone viral in the news in Canada. I start my international campaign to designate Quran as a hate literature. Because this is the root of the problem, not the people. How many Muslims, when they leave Islam and start speaking, after their honest experience, many people, they learn, they open their mind. I pray for Muslims all the time. And the sixth reason why I am calling for Quran to be designated as a hate literature, it's because it's promote and order Muslims, number one, to hate anyone who's not believer, killing through jihad and act of extreme terrorism, pedophilia, violence against women, anti-Semitism, stealing, lying from the unbelievers. And it's been more than one year I'm challenging Imams to prove me wrong. And guess what? None of them accept my challenge and can prove me wrong. And silence is consent. God bless you all. God bless the United States of America. Are you guys ready for the pledge? Yeah. yeah! And after the pledge, I'm gonna throw some shirts out. Yeah. All right. Sure. You guys ready? Yeah. You guys say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the United.